Hello, and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench, we have the Type 130 LC meter. A little bit different from this channel. This is not going to be a repair and restoration video. I did the repair and restoration video on this particular unit a while ago. Uh, but I had some questions come in on that video that I discussed with the viewer. And we both agreed that I should probably make a video about it. And they asked about calibration of this specific meter and if there was a way to calibrate it without the S30 Delta standard. The short answer is yes. The engineering answer is yes, asterisk with a bunch of considerations which we're going to go into into this video. A couple of the problems and a couple of solutions and then exactly what this thing is because this is not a normal standard that one uses in a lab. So a normal standard Essentially, I have a definition, so if I dial 10 volts on one of my voltage calibrators, ideally that calibrator should be as close to the national definition of 10 volts, which is maintained by the laboratory, uh, the NIST laboratory where I live. There will usually be some form of national regulating body that will handle those standards for different parts of the world. Uh, a lot of this stuff actually going back into the Wayback Machine was set up with the Treaty of the Meter, which was signed in Paris, and then kind of everything ties back to a couple of base SI units. If you're interested in that topic and want a very deep dive, uh, Veritasium has done a wonderful video um, that goes very far down the rabbit hole on standards and actually uh, what we did recently, which redefined the kilogram, which also had some effects in the electronic way of things. Um, the short answer is... For at least voltage, we have a, um, oh, they're Josephson junctions. So Josephson junctions, the abridged version is microwave frequency in, precise voltage out, and I can, I can get those ratios very, very nicely. Um, and, if I, and I know it's a precise voltage. If I stack the Josephson junctions, I can stack as many as I need to get whatever voltage I need. Now I have the definition of the volt, essentially. That is a mild oversimplification. For certain things like resistive, capacitive, things like that, we have, ex we have some of the best high-quality capacitors we could make. We have some of the best resistors we could make. And these are the standards. But ultimately, they're physical devices. And they do drift over time, so they need to be monitored. That's not what this thing is. So this is actually a delta standard. So if we take a look... We have 0 picofarads, minus 3 picofarads, plus 3, plus 10, plus 30, plus 100, plus 300. So the main problem with this is these are deltas off of this point. This isn't a 0 picofarad junction, at least at the tip up here. This is going to have some capacitance, and it ultimately doesn't matter what that is. We're setting it at 0. The way the 130 is aligned and calibrated is... Wherever that needle sits, if I adjust this up here, whatever the delta is should be 3 picofarads, and that's what we're aligning. So 0 picofarads to 3 picofarads, and then we can add 10. We can even minus 3 picofarads and go from there. Now, one of the challenges on aligning this particular meter is... We have a uh, micro microfarad range, which is old speak for picofarads. So we have range selections from 3 picofarads full scale to 300 picofarads full scale. And the colors here would indicate the colors that you read the graticule on up here. So if I'm over here at 3 picofarads, um, and actually if I take this off... We can see just this test fixture had some capacitance on it. We're um, not well zeroed, but we can work on that. That's what the zero controls are for. But if we zero out, and then we add the test fixture, it goes way up again. So I would need to zero that out again. And now I have the text, the, the added capacitance of the test fixture zeroed to the meter. So now I can take so now I can take measurements at this plane. But you'll notice how sensitive this is. If I just move my finger close to it, 
I'm not even touching that yet, and I'm adding capacitance to the system just by the way this, this unit reads. And part of that is a sensitivity problem with it being a full-scale reading at three picofarads. So I have zero picofarads to three picofarads, and that's it, full-scale reading. So it does not take much to cause this needle to just jump around a bit. And if I touch it, it just flies off the handle and flies off the scale. So that's our really first challenge is we need to get a good reference into the front end of this with as little capacitive coupling as possible, which means, which is one of the reasons why this particular unit is constructed this way. We have a coax cable. We have a very thick ground lead. This would actually be negative, And that's bolted to this connector, which is on this adapter, which goes to the PL259. What would be, what would be even better than this slightly would be directly on the PL259. This is a makeshift version of the test fixture that came with this unit, which was directly on a PL259 connector, and then it had two forks that came up, and then the part under test went between them. Uh, I don't have one of those, so this is the best that I actually have in the lab at the moment. And because it zeroes and the needle settles, this actually works okay. I can put a small capacitance in here, and I can even read down at the lowest ranges, which is, which is great. Using a standard that is not the Delta standard, because the Delta standard hooks directly to the PL259 port, um, will induce some bits of error, even with this test fixture. If I mounted a capacitor in here, did the adjustment, pulled that same capacitor out, put it back in, it might be off a little bit for capacitance sake. If that accuracy is not needed, you can absolutely get some very precise capacitors in here, pop them in, and go about doing some adjustments. However, there is a slight problem with that. As we can see, we have a two microsecond per division, and we have a nice waveform. And if I move the camera up, we have a base frequency coming out of the Type 130 of 133.0 kilohertz. That causes a slight bit of a problem because in the data sheets for capacitors, as they are rated, they are rated at 1 kilohertz. So we're 100x, more than 100x, above what the capacitor is rated for. Now, due to capacitive reactants, the test frequency will actually change the capacitance reading. So with a test frequency of 133x what the capacitor was tested and rated at, this could potentially change the measured capacitance value. Um, the question is how much and how little. So the best way to use components to do a direct calibration of a unit like this would be to test the test frequency of, of the specific Type 130. That was not very tightly controlled. Um, what the test frequency was out of this box. Once you get that, c characterize the capacitors you're planning on using. Uh, and I would also use some of the highest quality capacitors you could get. C0G, something like that, something that's not going to uh, drift with temperature. Because if we just use ceramic caps, any ceramic cap, a drift in temperature will change the capacitance, and we're using this for a calibration. The capacitors that were used in the NIST labs to calibrate this stuff were four lead oil filled, maintained at a temperature. These were fairly exotic capacitors, resistors and resistors included. So having the S30 Delta means we're not calibrating to the exact capacitance. We're calibrating to the change in capacitance versus the exact capacitance. So that's how we can get the accuracy with less precise standards because the capacitors in here, they're high quality, but they're not exotic by any stretch of the imagination. However, the ratios are what's important on this unit as opposed to the absolutes. If we go to the absolutes, some things are easier, some things are harder. Can it be done? Yes. Hopefully you have a way to characterize the components that you're planning on using specifically as accurately as possible. That'll give you the absolutes. Then you have to minimize the capacitance at the test point. Once we minimize the capacitance at the test point, 
also keeping in mind the test frequency of 130 kilohertz, or in my case, 133 kilohertz measured. I would characterize those caps at 133 kilohertz, get their, get their values as accurately as possible, minimize the capacitance on the test fixture. If I could zero it out the best, absolutely. Uh, if I could zero out the test fixture, that would also be great. And that would give me the absolute closest accuracy that I could get on a LC meter with without the delta standard. The delta standard, and one of the problems is, why would we go through that much effort? The delta standard gets an accuracy of a half a percent on this LC meter, which is actually extraordinarily tight for the for the day so especially considering that this is actually a tube unit and is 60s 70s vintage 70s at the latest a half a percent was an extraordinary extraordinary accuracy for the day on this piece of equipment and actually the lc or the type 130 this was a tech built unit for internal tech resources at techtronics that made its way to market but was never intended at least in the beginning, to be released as a product. This was an internal device that they used uh, on the test benches at Tech. Also, one thing to note is cabling and fixturing becomes very, very important uh, when doing an alignment on a type LC meter. This is a just a chunk of coax, actually. It's a Tech part number 120571. It's a 50 ohm cable. And it is a, um, I think this is 36 inches. So it's a relatively short co chunk of coax. Well, I had to bump it up to the 300 picofarad range. But at three, on the 300 picofarad range, which is this top scale on the meter, if I just plug this uh, open chunk of cable, this 36-inch cable has 100 picofarads of, of distributed capacitance along because this cable in and of itself because we have a center conductor, dielectric, outer jacket, this cable is a capacitor, be it a small one, but on this particular unit, when we're going from three to 300 picofarads, we have 100 micro, or 100 micro, 100 picofarads of distributed capacitance along a 36 inch chunk of coax. So fixturing is incredibly difficult doing a calibration as well. It's one of the reasons why the uh, input on the S30 Delta is built in, and you don't use a cable on this at all. This goes right into the front end of the um, Type 130, and it's even mounted so it sits on the desk while it's plugged in, and that is to minimize distributed and stray capacitances to make the accuracy as best it can, especially on the lower ranges. All right, well, after doing some experimentation, I needed to figure out that, uh, or I needed to prove that I wasn't full of it, because I initially talked about the test frequency being a problem. But it turns out, with the capacitance that this rain, this meter, or the Type 130 can measure, the test frequency is not really going to be a problem. This is a capacitor that I measured with the 4278A. Now that has a 1 kilohertz test frequency, which is typically to what they're rated at. And this is a 22 microfarad or microfarad 22 picofarad capacitor. That 22 picofarad capacitor uh, measured at 22.8 and some change, so just shy of 23 picofarad at 1 kilohertz. And if I zoom in, you guys can see we are just over just shy of 20 23 picofarad. So because we're on the uh, 30 picofarad range, we're actually using this 30 picofarad scale. So we need to measure right here as opposed to higher or lower. So that would be our measurement point right there. And it's just shy of 23 picofarad. So this test frequency in terms of this meter is not a problem. However, does test frequency matter? Absolutely it does. This is my uh, DE5000 meter, and here is a capacitor that is a 1,000 microfarad. Yeah, I believe this is rated a, th yeah, 16 volts, 1,000 microfarad. So what I can do is I can actually up the frequency on this. That'll be 1 kilohertz. 
Uh, the before it was a hundred hertz, so this is actually a little bit, a little bit um, closer. If I go over one kilohertz up to say a hundred kilohertz, we're down to ten microfarads. So in terms of capacitance, we've we've lost an order of magnitude on the capacitance by upping the frequency that we're asking this cap to respond to. This is one of the reasons why tantalum capacitors and a couple of others are used in conjunction with each other due to large capacitors and high frequencies don't play nice with each other. Now, if I hit this a couple of times and go to ESR, our ESR is actually still pretty good. 0 0.1 ohms. Everything's good. It's just this capacitor right here at a test frequency of 100 kilohertz does not measure 1,000 microfarad. It actually measures 10 microfarad. So actually, it's even worse. It's down by a factor of 100 because it was 1,000 microfarad. Now it's 10. So it's, it's down far more than I expected. So yes, absolutely, we can calibrate a Type 130 with fixed capacitance. The delta standard's not 100% necess not necessary. However, taking into account a slight decrease in accuracy and a few other things that we've gone into in this video, it can be done. Second half of the question is, can a Type 130 be used to measure the input of a scope front end. That's going to be a, another video that I'm going to record, and we'll answer the second half of the question. There's some interesting things that happen there, which we're going to go, go into in depth here in the future. Thanks for stopping by the lab and taking a look at the deeper dive into some calibration concepts on the Type 130. As always, if you have any questions, hit me up in the description below. I read all the comments between videos, and I love seeing everybody and hang around. Hit the YouTube buttons, like, subscribe, and share. And if you'd like to help out with the channel and help get additional content up to YouTube, check out the Patreon page. Patreons are running ahead of YouTube releases, and their support help keeps the light, helps keep the lights on here in the lab and videos coming up. I appreciate everybody's help through Patreon and viewers to the channel. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. More is on the way. Bye for now.